Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 2, lesson 3, real numbers. After this lesson, you need to be able to identify irrational numbers and name the set or sets of real numbers to which a given real number belongs. Let's learn. Real numbers. Real numbers are numbers that can be found on the number line. And if you're thinking how I would be thinking is, aren't all numbers real? Well, in future math classes, you will learn what are called imaginary numbers. But here we're going to focus on real numbers, which are the numbers that can be found on the number line. So we have some numbers here, negative 4.5, negative 1, 3 fourths, pi, and the square root of 21. Let's plot them on the number line. If you want to pause the video and test your plotting skills before I do it, do that now. Let's plot our numbers. We have negative 4.5 would be halfway between negative 4 and negative 5. So that one would be about there. I'm going to draw an arrow to it. Negative 1, we can plot. It's given on our number line. 3 fourths is, if I were to mark, here's half. Four, 3 fourths would be about right there. And I didn't draw an arrow to that one. Pi, 3.14. So just barely past 3. I know that the square root of 16 would be 4, so it's above 4, but the square root of 25 would be 5. 21 is about halfway between 16 and 25, maybe a little bit more than half, so it would be about right there. Within the set of real numbers, they can either be rational, which means that it can have a decimal expansion that either terminates or repeats, or it can be irrational. And an irrational number is a number that cannot be expressed as the ratio A to B, or you might see it as cannot be expressed as a fraction. And that is where A and B are integers, and then B can't be zero since we can't divide by zero. Irrational numbers have decimal expansions that are non-terminating and non-repeating which essentially just means they go on forever and ever. The square root of any number that is not a perfect square is irrational. So the square root of three, since three is not a perfect square, that decimal is irrational. And then the square root of five is also irrational. That decimal goes on forever and ever. Five is not a perfect square. As you can see, they have the little dots that tell it goes on forever and ever. And we'll look a little closer into how you can tell if something is rational or irrational in the upcoming examples. Let's sort these numbers by writing them in the Venn diagram. So we're going to sort them into rational or irrational, and then integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers if it's rational. If you want to do this before me, pause the video now before I go through it. All right, let's sort these. So negative 8 is a rational number, but how far does it go? Well, because it's a negative counting number, that goes in with the integers. Remember, whole numbers are 0 and your positive counting numbers. Natural numbers are just your positive counting numbers, not zero. So we did that one. Negative three fits right with negative eight. It's also an integer. Negative three fourths. It's not a counting number, so it's not in any of these circles. It is expressed as a fraction already or the ratio of A over B, so that is a rational number. Zero is one of our positive counting numbers, but it's the only one that is only a whole number. 18%, if I wanted to write this as a decimal, I could say that it's 0 0.18. If I wanted to write it as a fraction, 18 over 100, that is a rational number. So I'm just going to put it outside of my little ovals, but inside the rational number box. 0 0.4 repeating. The bar over it tells you that it repeats. Repeating numbers are rational because they form a pattern. We'll see in a second. Irrational do not form any patterns. They do not repeat. 0 0.45. That is also a rational number. It is a decimal that ends. It could be written as a fraction, 45 hundredths. Half is already a fraction. It's rational. So I just did those two. Pi goes on forever and ever and ever and doesn't repeat. It is irrational. 1.21231234. This looks like it might have a pattern to it. And in fact, it kind of does. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. But it is not a repetitive pattern. This one goes on forever and ever with no repeating pattern. So that one there is irrational. Square root of 3, that is not a perfect square. That is irrational. 4. 4 is a positive counting number. It's a natural number. Same with 9 and 10. Those both are positive counting numbers. They would be natural numbers. So if we're going through and sorting these, first thing we're going to want to do, decide if it's rational or irrational. 
the irrational ones are actually the easier ones to pick out. They're going to go on forever and ever without repeating. If you were to use a calculator, it might look like it ends, but it goes to the end of the calculator. Our rational numbers seems like there's a lot more of them. And as you get smaller and smaller circles, it becomes more and more specific and it turns into only positive counting numbers where anything outside is all your fractions, decimals, percents. As we just saw, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as the fraction or ratio A over B, where A and B are integers and B is not equal to zero. Integers, which was the larger oval, is all of the natural numbers and their opposites and zero. So that is the largest oval. It includes all your positive and negative counting numbers and zero. Whole numbers, which was the next middle sized circle, is all of your natural numbers and zero. And then finally, your natural numbers are the set of just the counting numbers that you learned when you were little. On the opposite side, we had our irrational numbers when we write them as decimals. So using our calculator to divide it out, then they are numbers that don't terminate, which means they don't end, and they do not repeat. Example one, identify real numbers. Determine whether negative 25 is rational or irrational. As we go through these, there's a couple questions that we can ask. So first, can negative 25 be expressed as a ratio in the form A over B? Well, yes it can. We can write it as negative 25 as A over one. Any number that's an integer or whole number or natural number can be written as a fraction over one, which is why they are in the rational number category. So yes, we can write it as a ratio. When we write it in the form A over B, are A and B integers and B not equal to zero? Well, negative 25 is an integer, one is an integer, and one is not zero, so yes. And then we know that a rational number is a number that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Since negative 25 is equal to negative 25 over one, then negative 25 must be a rational number. It can be expressed as a fraction. Check your understanding. Decide if two ninths is rational or irrational. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said two ninths is rational. It's already written as a fraction or a ratio of A over B. A is two, B is nine. They are both integers, so this would be rational. Example two, classify real numbers. Name all the sets of numbers to which the real number 0 0.2525 and so on belongs. The set of real numbers include natural numbers, whole numbers, integer, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. So we need to decide where 0 0.2525, we're going to assume it repeats based on the dots and the pattern. Where does that go? Can 0 0.2525 and so on be expressed as a ratio in the form A over B, where A and B are integers and B is not equal to zero? Yes. In fact, the fraction that we could write it as is actually 25 over 99. Is this number from the set of integers? So once we decided, yes, I can write it as a fraction, then I'm going to start working my way inward into those smaller sections. So the next one is integers. Is this an integer? Is it a positive or negative counting number? It is not. Which means as soon as we get a no, we are done. Therefore, 0 0.2525 is a rational number because it's equivalent to 25 over 99. So we would write it in the rational part outside of the ovals. The only thing we can consider it is rational, not integer, not whole, not natural. Check your understanding. To which set or sets of numbers does the real number 21 over the square root of four belong. Select all that apply. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said that this was rational only. So first of all, on the bottom there, the square root of four is two. So this is the same as 21 over two, which we can tell it's rational. It's expressed as a fraction. This one here, if this was an imperfect square on the bottom, this would actually be irrational. But because this square root is a perfect square, we can simplify it. 21 divided by 2 is 10 and a half, so 10.5. It's a decimal, which means it's rational, but it's not an integer, not a whole number, not natural. And because we decided that it was rational, it can't be irrational, since those are pretty much opposites of each other. Example three, classify real numbers. Name all the sets of numbers to which the real number square root of 36 belongs. So. Can the square root of 36 be expressed as the ratio in the form where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero? To figure that out, what is the value of the square root of 36? Square root of 36 is six. And since it doesn't give us that plus or minus out front, we can assume that it's just the positive or principal root. So can this be written as a fraction? Yes, six over one. Is the square root of 36, which we decided was six, is that from the set of integers? 
Yes, it is. It's one of our counting numbers. Is it from the set of whole numbers? Yes, it is. Is it from natural numbers? It's a positive counting number, so yes again. So since the square root of 36 is 6, it's a natural number, and a whole number, and an integer, and a rational number. Check your understanding. Which sets of numbers does the real number negative square root of 64 belong? Select all that apply. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said it's rational and an integer. So the square root of 64 is 8, and it's negative out front, so they want us to make it negative 8. Negative 8 can be written as negative 8 over 1, so rational, which means it's not irrational. It's a negative counting number, so integer, but because it's negative, it cannot be a whole number or natural. Example 4. Classify real numbers. Name all the sets of numbers to which the real number negative square root of 7 belongs. The negative square root of 7, when we convert it to a decimal, we find that it's approximately equal to 2.64575131. And it would keep going. Does the decimal terminate? So does it end? No, we can see that the dots there tell us it doesn't end. Our other check is, does it eventually repeat? As I go through, do I see any times where it looks like the pattern starts and it goes over and over? Not that I can tell, and if we can't tell by now, we're going to assume that it's not going to ever repeat. We only have so much limitation with our calculator and other technology. So does this repeat? It does not. Can it be expressed as the ratio of A to B where they're integers? Since this does not terminate and does not repeat, we cannot write it as a fraction, so no. Therefore, the decimal value of this does not terminate or repeat. This is an irrational number. And once we decide that it's irrational, that's the only classification that it would get. Check your understanding. Which sets of numbers does pi belong to? Select all that apply. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said pi is only irrational. It goes on forever and ever. It does not repeat. does not terminate. It is irrational. Let's learn. Describe sets of real numbers. So as we've seen, there are certain numbers that fit within certain parts but not with others. So some sets of numbers are subsets of other sets of numbers. For example, rational numbers and irrational numbers are subsets or smaller parts of the larger category of real numbers. So a Venn diagram can be used to describe the relationship between sets of real numbers. So as we can see here, real numbers is outside. All of this together are real numbers. As we go into the diagram, things start getting more and more specific, as we said before. So there are two types of real numbers, rational and irrational. Within the rational numbers, we have additional subsets. So there's the subset of integers, then we get the subset of whole numbers, and then the subset of natural numbers. If the shape is within another shape, it is considered a subset of that set. And this diagram can be helpful for you to try to figure out which numbers are always part of certain sets or always part of other sets, and which ones are not always. So let's use the Venn diagram to complete the following sentences. So blank numbers are a subset of whole numbers. Well, here's our whole numbers. So subset would be within that. That must be natural numbers. Blank numbers are subsets of integers. So here's our integers. Within it, we have our whole numbers. And then within that, the natural numbers. So both whole and natural are within the integers. Integers are a subset of rational and real numbers since the integers is within the rational, and then it's also within the whole box. And then rational numbers and irrational numbers are subsets of real numbers. As we're going through the next couple examples, we're going to decide if certain values are true, fitting within subsets of each other. If a given statement is false, we can provide what's called a counterexample, which is just a statement or example that shows a conjecture or the statement you were given was false. Before we move on to the next example, take time to pause and reflect. Read through the prompt. Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Example 5. Describe sets of real numbers. Use the Venn diagram to determine whether the statement is true or false. If the statement is true, explain your reasoning. If the statement is false, provide a counterexample. So our statement is all rational numbers are integers. Here we have our rational numbers. Here we have our integers. Are all of the rational numbers within that integers oval. So determine whether the statement is true or false. Integers are actually a subset of rational numbers, not the other way around. So this statement was false. 
All we have to do to prove something is false is provide a counterexample. So any number that is rational but not an integer would prove this false. So here they're giving an example of 0 0.6. 0 0.6 would be outside here. It's a terminating decimal, so it's rational, but it is not an integer. It's not a positive or negative counting number. So we just showed that not all rational numbers are integers. We just found one example that made it false, so we can say that it's false. Check your understanding. Similar to what we just did, use the diagram to determine if the statement provided is true or false. If it's false, provide a counterexample. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said this was false. All whole numbers are natural numbers. Well, here's our natural numbers. Here's our whole numbers. There's some space out here that's showing that there are whole numbers that are not in the natural section. So what is our counterexample? Well, the only one that actually works here is zero. Zero is the only whole number that is not natural. Example six, describe sets of real numbers. Use the Venn diagram to determine whether the statement is true or false. If it's true, explain your reasoning. If it's false, provide a counterexample. So all irrational numbers are real numbers. So by definition, irrational numbers are a subset of real numbers. Here's our real numbers. It's this whole box together. Irrational all fits within that. So all the irrationals are within the real numbers. So that is true. And since it's true, we just had to explain our reasoning. We do not have a counterexample. Check your understanding. Determine if the statement is true or false. If it's false, provide a counterexample. Pause the video now, complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that this is true. There's no counterexample since it's true. All of the natural numbers fit within the whole numbers. So this would be true. And for the true statement, for our reasoning, natural numbers are the subset of whole numbers, which makes it true. If it's a subset, all of the things in that fall within the other side.